Okay, so let's uh, get in the show wrapped up uh, as we bring uh, Namdi Ulisa Eloka, who is a uh, fixed income and currency analyst at uh, Zcrest Capital, is uh, live to us on the show from FMDQ uh, Exchange Place uh, to wrap up the trading week uh, for us. Namdi, good morning. Welcome to the show here. Good morning, Boston. Thank you for having me. Uh, a very interesting market week. The central bank pounded the market so much this week in, uh, in the back of the liquidity in the system. Uh, recap the week for us. How, what was the yield, track the yield curve for us this week and, and the market liquidity as we uh, wrap things up today? And if you think anything significant is going to happen through today before we go for this long holiday, taking us till next Wednesday when the markets will be formally reopened. Yeah, so Watson, this week has been very interesting. The market has been significantly bearish this week. Uh, week to day, trade yields have risen by almost 70 basis points now. And uh, the fact, the main factor that driving the, the sell offs in the market has been the escalating trade tension between the US and China, which has impacted oil prices, which are now, tra which are now trading below $60 uh, per barrel. So what we have witnessed so far, prior to this week, two weeks before this week, we've been witnessing some sellers by offshore investors in the market, but the local market has been resilient because of uh, an appetite from local investors. But this week, as oil broke the $6 per barrel ban, we saw increased sell-offs in the market. And the CBN came into the market on Wednesday to sell an uh, OMOT bill auction on, uh, on Wednesday. And... Uh, Unlike its last auction, where you it restricted banks from buying for their own accounts, in this particular auction it conducted, banks were allowed to buy for their accounts. And the yields were cleared about, at about 12% on the long end of the curve, the rate, which was higher than where the levels were in the market. So we saw bid reprise across the Treasury bills yield curve. So the market has been largely bearish, both on the bonds and on the Treasury bills, the government securities. Yeah, so uh, if, we, if you take uh, the rest of you folks on markets, if you take all of these, uh, into the weekend, perhaps you folks will sleep over everything uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. What do you think the outlook is for the market when we come back on Wednesday? How will the financial regulator uh, kickstart uh, the three-day trading uh, 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 sessions that we'll have for next week? We've already cut short. Of course, with our eyes on what uh, July inflation report will be uh, as soon as we get to the middle of next week. Yeah, so definitely... That's what we're thinking. That's what everybody is trying to guesstimate in the market at the moment. What's the CBN going to do? The Naira is coming under pressure again. If you look at the I and E uh, inf inflow reports from the I and E market, we are seeing that FPI inflows are their lowest this year in the month of July, and CBN has recorded its highest intervention in that market in the month of July. About 500, about 500 million dollars it sold in the market in the month of July. So we are seeing rates being pressured higher, and we are saying that if the CBN has uh, always said that it wants to maintain the stability of the Naira and ensure that inflationary pressures are put on that check. So it has two options. It's either it continues to intervene via selling foreign exchange in the market to support the currency, which would also drain system liquidity, or it goes, it goes ahead to, which is counterproductive to its earlier strategy, to raise interest rates to support the Naira. So either way, this is one of the two options we think the CBN is going to do. But with putting all the factors into, into play, we think that the market will still maintain a slightly bearish mode as we open next week's trading session. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Inamdi Olisailoka. We appreciate your time this morning. Enjoy your weekend, and it's good to have you on the show. You too, Boston. Happy holidays. Thank you so much. We never go on holiday here. Have we ever done that? Now, Channel Television. Now, never go on holiday. This is Nigeria's news leader, where news and business and every other piece of information comes first, keeping everyone uh, up to speed. So the public holiday will be Monday, Tuesday, the margin and market will be reopening after the Muslim holiday on Wednesday. Keep that in mind. As soon as we get back on Wednesday, we'll start sniffing around for July inflation uh, data. On the stock market side, it's been a very interesting week. MTN uh, reported to the market the tax tribunal uh, issues taking place between the telco giant and the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Then we got the news that MSCI, the Morgan Stanley Capital International, will include MTN Nigeria PLC in the MSCI in, uh, Frontier Markets indexes from August the 27th. That's one big news that pushed the shares of MTN up yesterday, saving the market. Another bearish turn. The banking sector yesterday was down about 2% 
all on the back of trade fights, the currency uh, issues around between Washington and Beijing. You heard from uh, Namdi there how foreign portfolio investors have been selling down on the Nigerian Naira assets. This week, it's been the stock market is going down, but MTN have the market gain 0.05 on Thursday. This is what the numbers look in summary very quickly. i just recap that for you. We're still below the 28,000. That's no longer news. We're just trying to make sure we hold on to this uh, level and push it upward if we can. But let's get Temple uh, Shaju, our uh, business correspondent from the Stock Exchange Trading Floor, to give us a, a better recap of the, uh, of the trading week. Temple is the one standing where the market uh, ocean is very, very deep. I'm just standing by the, by the seashore here. Temple, you had one in the middle of, the, of it all. So, uh, recap the week for us. Well, just like you said, Bosin, it's been very, very uh, dramatic this week so far. We saw a little bit of gains yesterday. Just imagine gaining about six billion naira plus yesterday in the market. I mean, that's what we saw in the market yesterday. But that's thanks to uh, uh, MTN, which is able to, on the good news that we saw around uh, Morgan Stanley International, you know, uh, putting it on its frontier markets, uh, uh, helping that particular stock now to push up the indices of the market yesterday. Specifically, uh, it is the second largest uh, stock in the market. Uh, and so it was up yesterday by 327 basis points. Uh, that's how we got a little gain that we saw. But generally, the overall weak sentiments we've had in the market remains uh, in the market. It's still dominating the whole performance as we speak. Uh, there's a report from Vetiver Capital Management and recently which says that 59% of the stocks that you have in the market are currently trading at year lows. Uh, five, uh, three of the uh, five tier one banks that we have in the banking sector are currently at their year lows as well. The likes of Zenith Bank are down by some 21% year to date. The likes of FBN Holdings down by a whopping 37% uh, year to date. And so uh, there looks, it looks like there's no, really no room for uh, gains or profit at this point in time. Investors are only trying to be smart by doing valuations around a few companies, you know, to see how to uh, do some gains. Uh, that's why the likes of Mansad, an insurance company, uh, yesterday, which had hit uh, an 18% yesterday lows, that's 1,965 cobalt, uh, had a bit of a gain yesterday. Uh, because it's, if you compare to 2,920 cobalt, where it's traded as the year open, uh, 1,965 1, cobalt was a really low amount. That's why you saw the likes of Mansa getting some 10%, uh, almost 10% yesterday. So that's about the sense that investors are uh, cooking up to uh, see how they can make profits in the market. The uh, weak sentiment in the market is not encouraging. Uh, you've got, as you mentioned earlier, Bosin, uh, crude oil price now at uh, about $57 per barrel. That's about 5% less than $60 per barrel, which is the benchmark that the budget of Nigeria you know, has. So that's not anything good for uh, investors. And that's what also explains the um, level of risk of sentiment that we are seeing on the part of offshore investors, as explained by Olisai uh, Loka earlier from the FMDQ Exchange List Boston. Yes, uh, Temple, I'm trying to search around. I'm trying to quickly uh, look around for Airtel Africa. The numbers came in yesterday. is first post listing numbers uh, for just about one minute quickly. But it looks like the market hasn't really taken this up yet. Oh, yes. Uh, again, I, th I really don't know why we are seeing those numbers at this point, because uh, a lot of those numbers have actually been made available uh, way before now, when the listing of Airtel actually happened. So uh, I think uh, maybe uh, it is just coming, they are basically just coming uh, by way of um, meeting some kind of obligation, some kind of post-listing obligations on the market. Uh, the full year numbers came in during the listing. Uh, we've also seen the uh, uh, nine months, uh, which was also repeated yesterday. Then we again, we saw the uh, Q1 2019 because uh, the year end for this particular company is March, uh, March, the tw March 2019. So uh, the period um, uh, 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 May, uh, July have actually been declared, or April, May, June have actually been uh, made available to the market. And so uh, perhaps it's just by way of meeting those demands as they ought to come uh, uh, periodically, Boson. Okay, Atempu, thank you so much to have you on the show. Do uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. Uh, part of uh, Channels Television.
business yeah. news team out of the stock exchange trading floor. Of course, if you're owing Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria by now, you already know that the agency has been weaponized by President Buhari with the, uh, putting pen to signature amending uh, the laws guiding the operations of AMCON. Uh, the Mr. President is now expanding his anti-corruption war into chronic debtors. Five trillion naira being owed. Now you have all it out there in looking for that money. There's nowhere to hide. Well, let's just uh, put the show on the shelf a little bit, and you know, we'll come back on Monday, and then we we'll continue from here. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy the weekend, and if you're on holiday here in Nigeria, happy holiday to everyone. But I'll be here bright and early on Monday.